big welcome to VIC Sunday service. Wherever you are connecting, I'm confident that God will move in a mighty ways today. For those who are joining us for the first time, a special welcome to you. We are happy to share that our Sunday service will be streaming every Sunday at 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. And at this two timing, we want to engage with you. So we have a live chat for us to interact. And right now, it's spend some time in the live chat. Type in the thumbs up or say hi because we and many others would like to connect with you. Also, take a time to share this link with others or invite your friends who are not connecting with us yet so that they can participate in this service together. Many of us are called to WFH, which means work from home. However, let's press in for a higher calling of WFH, which is worship from home. So church, are you ready to praise and worship? In where you are, let's stand up and bring to Him our hearts of thanksgiving. Let's get ready to sing, to shout, to dance with music and song to the Lord. For Psalms 95 says, He has called us to come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the King above all gods. Are you ready to welcome the King of Kings with our praises? Let our praises be the sweet fragrance be the sign that say to our great God that we are here for you, that we are here to worship you. Let us worship now. Songs be a 
change comes up my way when, when I can stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay so teach my soul to rise to you when temptations come Father, come and fill us 
with your refreshing living water that gives new hope, new strength, and new joy. Without you, we are nothing. Apart from you, we can do nothing. It is in your presence that we can find rest. Right now, we release our fear, our needs, our challenges to you. Help us to see the victory we can have in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. I'd like to thank each one of them for their commitment and honor them for their spirit of excellence. During this season, we are able to participate service from our home. It's because there is a team who dedicated their time, even sacrificed to go all the way out to ensure everything runs well for streaming online. And we want to specially thank the sound and the lighting crew, the camera, the video editing team, and many of you who has dedicated your time so that many can be blessed in this season of church service online. We pray God to continue to bless you with greater spiritual gifts and greater fruitfulness. Well, now is the time for tithes and offering. Let us worship God with our giving today. No matter what we give, we can never outgive God. He who has given us hope, abundant life through His only Son, Christ Jesus. So let's take a moment to give to Him. There are instructions on the screen below, or you can participate in giving by scanning the new QR code shown below. So let's take a moment to give to God. Let's pray for the tithes and offerings. Dear Jesus, we thank you that we can worship you in giving. Bless the tithes and offerings. We pray these offerings to be multiplied and accomplish what you intended for. We also pray for those needing financial blessing, that you open opportunities for them to be blessed. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, church, we had an awesome time last Friday evening connecting with many of you online and also with various connect groups when we come together to partake Holy Communion as a big family. I want to highlight that there is a dynamic power in small group meeting like our connect group. It's a place that we can share openly, a place of support, a place to learn and to serve. And if you are not part of a connect group, I want to encourage you to find a connect group. You can write in the chat today, type in that I want to be a part of a connect group and we will direct you to one. Well, our kids are in the bus every Sunday at 4 p.m. online. We have separate activities for our kids from 3 to 6 and 7 to 12 through two different Zoom meetings. So parents, set aside this time for your kids to get connected. We have started an amazing journey of 40 days prayer and fasting with Love Singapore. And here is the link that we have if you have not joined. In Book of Acts, each time when God's children come together in extended times of seeking God, and it led to greater outpouring of the spirits, signs and wonders, miracles happening, and many more added to the church. So join us in this 40 days journey and you can get the details from this link. On top of this, we also have our regular VIC prayer meeting on Wednesday lunchtime, 12.30 p.m. to 1 p.m. and Thursday evening, 8 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. where we can share prayer requests together and pray for one another. Well, are you ready? Are you ready to receive God's word? Today, 
Pastor Omar has a word for us. Let's invite him over to the stage as we pray for him. Dear Jesus, we pray for your anointing over Pastor Omar as you use him to deliver the Shrema words you have put in his heart. Open our hearts to receive the words that you want to speak to us and anoint this time with your manifested presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Victory International Church, welcome one more time to God's house, God's presence. We are here to glorify our Lord. That's, that's important. That's amazing. We, are, we usually say, here you have a home. This is what we want. We want to know each other. We want to connect each other. If you are watching now, uh, attending the service, you didn't say hi until now. Say hi. We are here from where you are. You are coming for the first time. Really join us because we want to connect with you right now uh, uh, in the live chat. Let me tell you, uh, God is preparing already our hearts. The worship was amazing, but he has much more for us. Every single time that we seek his presence, he, he surprises us. He, he shows us part of his heart. Let me share with you what we call the God's power for salvation. Yeah? God's power for salvation. Uh, we will focus basically in the book of Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, I believe these are powerful verses that we need to not only memorize, we need to, to appropriate these blessings. We will move together. Uh, let's declare uh, Romans 1, 16, 17. Say for Paul talking, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. Say with me, it is the power of God to salvation, to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and also for the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. It's Romans 1, 16, 17. I would like when, after finish this, this service, you can also write down, not only copy and paste, write down with your hands. Try to appropriate in your heart this amazing uh, two verses. We will go through. You will be amazed how, what God is going to do in our lives. The verse 15, the just verse, the previous verse, is uh, Paul talking to the church in Rome. This, I am ready. I am ready to preach the gospel, the gospel to you also who are in Rome. In that context, he say, why? For I am not ashamed, no, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why? For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. My first question is, do you believe in Christ? Do you believe in the gospel? Do you believe that Jesus Christ rose up again to save us, to give us, to give us eternal life? Then how can this be possible? For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just, the righteous man shall live by faith. Let me go to the first part of this verse. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Think about yourself. Can you say this every single time? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of God's word. I'm not ashamed of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the message of the cross. Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross to save us, to save me. He was crucified for our sins. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm proud of this. Paul will say, I glory in the gospel. Because Jesus Christ rose again. He's alive. He overcame the dead. He will come back. I can declare he's my Lord. He's my Savior. I can trust in him. I can trust in his word, in his promises. When I fix my eyes in him, I can see God's glory, his presence. My heart rejoices in the eternal life that comes from God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Can you say also the same? Every moment, wherever you are, we must be proud of Christ. We must be proud about the gospel of Christ. The second part says the gospel is the 
power of God to salvation, I want to focus today in this part, is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Remember, faith comes by hearing the word of God. That's very important. How we are going to increase our faith when we read the Bible, when we hear the message. For the reason it's important, every single day, you must be fed by the God of God's word. Because your faith will increase, will become uh, stronger and stronger. You will be able to face anything because God is with you. <coughs> For uh, Ephesians 2 verse 8 and I said, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. That sounds incredible because salvation comes from Christ alone. It's not up to us. It's up to him. It's all about God. Only the gospel of Christ, <coughs> only the gospel of Christ can offer us this kind of hope. It's hope by grace. In Christ alone, only in him, we can receive salvation. Only in him, we can enjoy eternal life in his presence. But how can can be possible when we consciously we receive Christ. Oh, we understand that he gave his life for us. For all of us, we can live in him. When the gospel is preached, people receive life. We receive life. The blessings is released through faith in Christ. And you become a blessing. We become a blessing to bless others. Every one of us, you and me, all of us, we need salvation. Because all have sin. We were separated from God. This is something that we need to understand. We were without hope, without God, without hope, in complete darkness and torment. But God, just Him, because His love to us, He chose us. He chose you. He chose us to save us from the eternal condemnation that we deserve because we were sinners without Him. The Bible says we were enemies of Him. But we were being delivered to what they call the penalty of sin, the wages. But also we were being delivered from the power of sin as we grow and grow in, in godliness and also in a holy life. Because we are called to live a holy life, a life that expresses God's uh, holiness every single day. We are being also uh, delivered from the presence of sin in our lives or we stand blameless in God's presence in the last day. Let me tell you, if we are all God's people, uh, sorry, good people that he only need a little encouragement to, to be right with God, and in this case, we don't need Christ. That's not our condition. Our condition is totally a sinful nature, doing our own things, every time separated from God, walking far from him. But for this reason, we need a Savior. Jesus was crucified for our sins. Without him, we will condemn the eternal death. But salvation leads us to sanctification. The gospel is the only message with, with a capital letter that powerfully can change, change us from our sinful life to a holy life. Every one of us, we are called to this. If we allow the Holy Spirit to change us, when we receive Christ, He can change us from our condition. We can experience this transformation and enjoy God's presence just because the power of the gospel in our lives. The gospel is the power of God. It's showing when God, when Jesus rescued us, when he reconciled us with God again in the redemption. But it's also expressed in our present life, in our faith, in our hope, in our love. God reveals himself by his word, but also by his son, Jesus Christ. The gospel of the message is, uh, the gospel is the message above any other message. Because it reveals God's purposes for us today in this generation. We need to accept 
y submit ourselves to God's authority. What is what God's purpose in our lives? We need to say, I, I am in. I want to go because I understand His ways. His ways are better and higher and bigger than me, than mine. Living according to God's word expresses our new identity in Christ. Must be expressed. Wherever we go, we need to reflect God's character in our life. For the reason in our church, we want to express the real love of each other. We want to care for each other. We are trying to connect much more. Thanks, God, is slowly they are opening more and more the restriction, less restriction. But still we need with care, uh, meeting each other. But beside this, we need to pray for each other, to express our love, our forgiveness, our care for each other. Because God uh, asked, eh? we need to love God. But also we need to love others. If that's the best place that we can express our love, our care. Salvation needs, we all need, all of us, we need salvation. But salvation needs the power of God. It's not telling about the power of God. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. Salvation is, is not obtained by our, our own efforts or our good works. No, it's received by faith alone. It's a gift of God. That he wants to give us. But it's, it's, it's available for all of us. But it's effective for everyone who receives, who understands. For the reason it's important when we uh, gather together in, in the small groups, we have chance to open our hearts, the, to interact in other way that we can understand. I, I am thinking about this. I don't understand this part. Who can explain me? We can share together, pray together, encourage each other, receive God's word. In all of us, we can experience the, how great is God's presence in our lives. Because every time that we receive uh, God's word, faith comes to us. We have chance to be saved because the power of God in us. It's God's looking. Salvation, God's looking for the, for the lost man. Yeah? Uh, it's not. It's not depending on human decisions. It's all about uh, the power of God. Last time I was I was reading something like a, it's like a God imparting new life uh, to a dead sinner. Remember when when Lazarus was was uh, dead already. What Jesus say after the four days, he just released his word. He said, "Lazarus, come forth." Right? The power of God through the word of Jesus Christ imparted life to a dead man. That was happening in our lives when we were walking without Christ. The same. The God's words came to give us life, a real life that we can live forever in God's presence. It's, it is God's giving new life eh, to those who were dead in their sins, to you, to me. If you didn't receive Christ until now, I think today is the moment to say, I cannot continue living like this. I need to receive the real life that comes from God. The good news of Christ impacts the life of whom believe it. How to believe when I hear. The message of the cross, according to 1 Corinthians 1.18, says, It's foolishness to those who are perishing, but... To us who are being saved, it is the power of God. That is the way that we need to be proud of this because God's power is in our life. We receive in fullness. Uh, even Paul saying in other moment in the First Corinthians 2, My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, no, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power that your faith should not be in wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is the way that we need to move. We need to move in the supernatural way uh, of faith, dimension of faith. And the, the third part is, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. The gospel is revealed to us by God through Jesus Christ. We all know that we have seen. If God is righteous, if we are not, then we need a Savior. You need a Savior. All of us need. This righteousness is God's attribute. God reveals God's right. The gospel reveals God's righteous character. 
the good news comes from God. It's our responsibility to continue proclaiming God's word as a good news of, for salvation. It's God's saving power eh, in being faithful to his promises. Jesus met the requirement for God's perfect love. He died to pay the penalty that we as sinners deserve. For the reason now we can receive, we can enjoy the righteousness that comes from God to live in him. From faith to faith, is we receive the gospel by faith. But we go, we go on also living by faith. We continue living every single day. Believing, trusting that God is in control in our life. That he's the one who leads our, our daily, our single steps. Saving faith is an ongoing, a life, a long process. It's, it's, it's true that you are justified when we believe, but it's also uh, when we continue going on, we will grow in this process, what we call a sanctification process to become much more like this. Our families must feel, our family members must feel, my still there is something different in us because God is working in us, the, the sanctification to show us in our character, in our life, in our decision, in our talking, He is with us. Faith applies uh, to everyone who believes. We rejoice in Christ alone as our only hope of eternal life. We don't trust, listen to this, we don't trust in our good work as a contribute, as an element of our salvation. No, we trust in Christ alone. The last part is we just, the just, the righteous man, they shall live by faith. Salvation is by faith. It's all about God. It's his initiative. That he wants that we come back to him, to his presence, because we were created by him. If salvation comes through faith plus good works, then it's not uh, good news at all. Why? Because we could never know when it's considered enough to qualify. No, it's not about how good I am, how good works I do. No, it's about pleasing God. He chose us. He chose you. He wants to choose you today if you didn't receive Christ yet. But if God declares us righteous or justified when we believe, that in this case, that's a really a good news. Because when we were sinners, when we were living in a sinful nature, he chose us eh, to live according to him, to give us a, a new heart, to make us born again, to live in his presence. Saving faith is Christ. Saving faith in Christ is understand who Jesus is. It's understand what his death on the cross means. It's also understand that he raised from the dead. We must express a very active response to the truth of the gospel. Intentionally say, I believe in this. I believe. I accept. I submit my life to Christ because I know that only in him I can be saved. When our days are finished in this earth, we will continue living. But where? I usually say there is only two places. Or you are in God's presence, or you are far out of God's presence. If we want to live in his presence every single time, we commit ourselves to Christ. We trust in him. We receive all that God offers to us in Christ as a free gift. But also after that came a responsibility to honor him, to honor his name in our daily life. Salvation, let me finish with this, is a individual, a personal matter. You need to choose Christ by yourself. It's, it's for everyone who believes. No, no need to be excluded. But the good news is, whatever your background is, whatever you did before Christ, when you hear the message of salvation, 
you need to understand that he is the only hope in your life. If that's the moment to say, I want, he can change my life. I want to give my life to him. It's not enough to be a member of a Christian family. You must personally, you must believe in Christ. Let me call the worship team uh, to join us because we are going to move in prayer. We're going to move in a powerful prayer that we can declare that I'm not ashamed of, of the gospel. Yeah? Let me ask you, if you feel that you are a, a religious guy, a self-righteous guy, a moral person, a good man, let me tell you, don't trust in any of these things. Just receive the righteousness of Christ by faith because he is the one who calls us. If you are in the other side, you don't believe in Christ at all. If you are already living in a sinful nature as an immoral person, you are considered a hard sinner, it's time to turn from these things. It's time to cry out to God to be merciful to you. You will go home justified by God if you surround your life to him. Let me close with this uh, the same two verses that we started today because I would like you can remember along this week, you can declare many times along this week, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. If you believe, this promise is for you, this word is for you. For in, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The, the just shall live by faith. Let me pray for you and we will worship together. When we worship, let us God né, to put your heart in his presence that he can impact you today with God's word in all of us. We can really experience starting today a new beginning, a new life in our life. But we can say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of Christ. I want to live. I want to declare wherever I go that I belong to Christ, that my life has started to change because He is with us. Let me pray for you. We will worship after that. Jesus, I want to pray today for every one of us that we are attending this service, that we are receiving your word, that you can put in us, Jesus, the conviction that we need you, Jesus, that we need you every single moment, that without you, we, we are condemned. Without you, we are lost. But today, we are receiving your word. We declare today, Jesus, that we will live for you alone, but we need your help today change our life and help us to live for you. Let me invite you to worship together. When we worship, I declare, declare yourself that God is going to change your mind, your heart, and you will experience a personal encounter with, with God in the name of Jesus. So let's worship together.
Jesus rose and conquered the grave. Church, this resurrection power that conquered the grave, this dynamic power that brings salvation, the same power that overcame the plan of the enemy, this power which gives us the ultimate victory, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that this dynamic power is active and alive in us. The Bible says, it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Church, today's message by Pastor Omar is timely for us. And it's not just for those who has yet to receive Jesus as their Savior. It is for us because salvation is a lifelong journey. Salvation is not a one-time action where you say the sinner's prayer. It is a lifelong experience of grace, of healing to our hearts, our mind and our soul reforming us as God's children, renewing, restoring, and rebuilding you towards a destiny that Pastor Omar said that God has called you. That's why the Bible says that we are to walk, walk out our salvation with fear and trembling because it is a daily journey. Yet this is a confidence we can have the dynamic power of Jesus Christ is alive in us. God has given us the Holy Spirit to guide us, to guide us in the way of salvation. And I felt today, God wants to minister to you and I in two ways. This transforming power that Pastor Omar said, this transforming power of God, He wants to minister to you and I. He wants to minister this transforming power in and upon us for us to reach our destiny, our calling. Because there are some of you, you are needing fresh power to achieve your destiny. You have received your calling before. You have been prophesied before. You have dreams, but you are feeling restricted to move forward. So many things are weighing you down and pressing you, but God wants to release to you this destiny-reaching power. And this is the first that He wants to minister to you. He wants to also release to you this transforming power coming down like frames of revival in VIC. For this is what we need personally and corporately as a church. Revival fire, renewal of our passion, a return to our first love. At this present hour, God wants to release this revival fire so that we can receive this power. And when we receive this power, it's not just for ourselves, but to co-work with God in causing healing and salvation to others. I will invite the worship team to sing the second verse of this song. Take me as you find me. All my fears and failures fill my life again. Church, ask God to fill our life with a fresh outpouring of His power in and through our life. Take me as you find me All my fears and failures Feel my life again I give my life to follow Everything I believe in Now I 
instruments continue let's leave our voice and in our own words i want it to be a moment just between you and god because god wants to pour out his power upon us even at your home he wants to empower us with his destiny with revival fire surrender to him your fatigue your sense of loss of directions your loss of passion God is wanting us to press on to touch Him. Let's spend a moment between you and God. And after this, I will get Brother Louis to pray over us, for us. Come, let's uh, in your own words begin to talk to God, begin to cry out to Him, begin to invite God. Oh, come, Holy Spirit, take your place, your throne in my life. Oh, Shandalamba, Sandalamba, Shikiriande. Church, continue to sing in your own words. Oh, la la ba sa na la ba sha na la ba so na la ba shi ki di an dai. Ku la la ba sa na la ba shi na la ba si di an dai. Let the revival fire pour upon us, upon each one of us, and upon VIC. Oh, la la ba si ki di an dai sha na la ba so na la ba sha na la ba sa dai. Let that be a renewal of passion. Our first love. Everyone that is watching in their homes, Lord, may this be a prayer of agreement, Lord. We agree that you are the cornerstone, you are the only one, Lord. You, we agree, Lord, that we need you and we need you, Lord, for we can continue on your way. We agree, Lord, that we you are mighty to save. We agree, Lord, that your power and only your power is able to transform and change our lives, Lord. So we want to continue and remain in your presence in agreement, in surrender to ask you, Lord. May your Holy Spirit, Lord, really with transformation power, really act and transform our lives. May this not be only a regular Sunday that we just praise you and we end the video and we just go and do our things, Lord. But may your Holy Spirit continue to work in us, continue to work in us throughout the day and throughout the week. May we see and may we hear your voice, Lord, as we go along. And may this transformation power, Lord, the transformational power from your, from your sacrifice through your Holy Spirit, Lord, may it bring us, Lord, closer and closer to your will, closer and closer, Lord, to your purpose, to our lives, Lord. And maybe, Lord, in this moment and today and onwards, Lord, may we really live the way that we are supposed to live. May your power, may the, may the weight of your glory, Lord, really, follow us wherever we go lord may we not be lord look warm in our lives lord and may we follow through with the fire of the holy spirit everywhere we go so lord i want to thank you i want to praise you lord for each and every one that will gather together today to worship you and stay with you and as we start lord and we go towards the end of the service lord we want to deliver our hearts lord in, in gratefulness to worship you and praise you because you and you alone lord are worthy of our praise so we want to thank you and we want to worship you tonight and here on in this week in jesus name we pray amen before we close the service i would like to talk to a special group of people friends you are here today and have you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and today his spirit is calling you forward that you may reach the destiny for which he has made you and called you if today you want to say yes to Jesus come and be the Lord of my life May you raise your hands and repeat this prayer as I lead you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I know I need you and I want you in my life. Forgive me of my wrongdoings. Jesus, I believe you died for me and rose again. Today, I invite you as my Lord and Savior. Make me a new person as right now you live in my heart. In your name we pray. 
Well, welcome to this big family. It is here that you can always have a home. Let your Christian friend know these decisions you have made. Or write in the live chat. We are here to support you in your walk with God. And I'm ending with this. Church, I'm going to declare a prayer of blessing over your life today. Lift up your hands to heavens and receive this open heavens blessing. Oh, come Holy Spirit, fill us once again. Breathe upon us divine strength and new hope. The Holy Spirit call us to the victory of Jesus. I pray victory over your life, over your plan, over your future. Victory over your family, your career, your finances. Victory over your failures, your doubts, and your disappointments. I pray victory to the dreams that God is giving you. As God, victory is ours through the resurrection power of His Spirit who has the victory even over death. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God bless you, church, as He anoints you to go forth in His transforming power and be fruitful in this coming week. Amen.